everyone! Welcome back to our math room. In this video, we will be having a lesson in general mathematics, and that is finding the domain and range of functions. So for this lesson, the learning objective is that you should be able to find the domain and range of any function. But first, let us recall some concepts. Domain refers to the set of all values of x, while range refers to the set of all values of y. Now, let us have an example. Let us find the domain and range of a set of ordered pairs. Let's say we have set A with ordered pairs 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and 7, 2. The domain of this set A consists of all x elements in the ordered pairs. Thus, we have 1, 3, 5, and 7. Well, for the range, we have to look at the y values. Hence, we have the set with elements 2, 4, and 6. After understanding how to find the domain and range of a set of ordered pairs, let us now have how to find the domain and range of a function given its graph. To do this, let us take note that in finding the domain, we have to look at the x-axis from left to right. We have to start from the negative values going to the positive values. While for the range, we have to look at the y-axis from down to up. It's still from the negative going to the positive values. Now, in writing a domain or a range, we have to take note that we can either use set or interval notations. Here are the sample set notations. If the values are between two numbers, we can follow this format. x is greater than a but less than b. Or, if the values are greater than or equal to a certain value, we can follow x is greater than or equal to a. Or, if the values are less than a given point, we have x less than b. Or, you may have the interval notation. If the values are between two numbers, wherein these two numbers are not included, we use open and close parentheses A and B. Or, if we have values greater than or equal to a certain point, we can follow A with a bracket that indicates that it is included and it goes to positive infinity. Or, if the values are from a given point going to the left, meaning going to the negative values, we can follow this format, negative infinity, comma, b, which indicates the given point. In this presentation, we will be utilizing the set notations. Now, we have an example, f of x is equal to negative x. This is a linear function whose graph is shown at the right. Observe that the graph extends infinitely to both directions, left and right. And if we are going to put together all the values of x, x can be any real number. We can have the negative values, 0, and the positive values. With that, this one gives us a domain of the set of x such that x is an element of real numbers, or we can simply say set of real numbers. Likewise, if we are to find the range of this graph or this function, as we observe the graph from down to up, it contains the set of real numbers as well. Thus, the range of this function is the set of y such that y is an element of real numbers. And this domain and range are true to all linear functions. Next example, we have g of x is equal to x squared minus 4. Looking at the graph of this quadratic function, it is a parabola that opens upward and it extends infinitely in upward direction. Also, as we can see in our graph, it extends infinitely to left and to right. Thus, the domain of this function gives us the set of real numbers. Now, looking at the parabola, it has a vertex at point 0, negative 4, and there are no points beyond negative 4 for y. Thus, we can say that the values of y are greater than or equal to negative 4. Third example, we have h of x is equal to negative square root of x. Looking at the graph of this radical function, 
notice that the values of x are from 0 to the right, which means the domain does not contain any negative number. So it means to say that the domain of this function is the set of x such that x is greater than or equal to 0. As for the range, looking at the y-axis, we don't have a graph greater than 0. We only have a graph below the x-axis. Therefore, the values of y are from 0 going to negative values. And so the range of this function is set of y such that y is less than or equal to 0. For our fourth example, let us consider the graph of a piecewise function. As we can see here, the piecewise function contains two separated graphs. And in order for us to easily find the domain and range, we have to look for the domain and range separately. Then later on, we are just going to use the connector OR. Now, to find the domain, we have to start from left to right. So as we can see here, this graph started at point negative 1. And since the point is shaded, it means to say that this is included in the domain. And the graph continuously moving, going left. With that, this part of our graph has a domain of set of x such that x is less than or equal to negative 1. Well, for the other graph, the graph is from point 1. And since the point is hollow or unshaded, this is not included in our domain. Then as we can see, the graph is continuously moving, going right. With that, the domain for this graph is x greater than 1. So to combine these two values, we have the set of x such that x is less than or equal to negative 1 or x is greater than 1. As for the range of this graph, we have to follow what we did with the domain. We have to look for the set of y values separately. So we have to start from down to up. In this case, we have to start with this graph. As we can see here, we have an unshaded point at negative 2, and the graph is continuously moving downward. In that case, the values of y are less than negative 2. Next, we have to look at the other graph. As we can see here, the graph is started at point 1, which is included, and the graph is continuously moving upward. In that case, the values of y are greater than or equal to 1. And to combine these two values, we have set of y such that y is less than negative 2 or y is greater than or equal to 1. In the previous examples, we look for the domain and range of a function based on their given graphs. This time, let us learn how to find the domain and range given only a function. First, we have f of x is equal to 3x minus 5. As we can see in this given, we can input any real number to x and we will be able to find a real number y. In that case, the domain and range of this function are both set of real numbers. Another way to find the domain and range is by thinking what type of function this is. This one is a first degree polynomial function which is called a linear function. And we can actually visualize the graph of this. This one has a slanting graph. Also, we can just simply think of the properties. As we can see here, a linear function has a domain and range both set of real numbers. Next example, we have g of x is equal to the square root of x minus 8. As we can see in the given, g of x has a radical sign. Therefore, its radicand should be non-negative. So we have here x minus 8 must be greater than or equal to 0. Solving for x, we have x greater than or equal to 8. With this, our domain contains the values of x such that x is greater than or equal to 8. Also, for its range, since we cannot have a non-negative value for the x, then it follows for the range we cannot have non-negative as well. Therefore, the range of this function is y greater than or equal to 0. Next, we may just simply think of its properties. So as we can see here, we were able to follow the domain and the range. 
For this example, we have h of x is equal to negative 3 absolute value x plus 2 plus 7. This is an example of an absolute value function. And for the value of x, we can substitute any real number and we will be able to find a real number y. In that case, the domain of this function is a set of real numbers. As for the range of this function, we have to consider the value of a. Since the value of a is negative, it means to say that the graph of this absolute value function opens downward. So to illustrate, the graph of this function that opens downward has a vertex at point 7, which is the highest point. Since it has a vertex at point 7, then it opens downward. It follows that the range of this function is less than or equal to 7. Or, you may just simply think of the properties of the absolute value function. As we can see here, if a is less than 0, then the range is y less than or equal to k, where k is the value which is 7. Next example, we have f of x is equal to negative x squared plus 4x minus 8. This is an example of a quadratic function since the highest exponent is 2. As we all know, in a quadratic function, we can substitute any real number to x and we will be able to find a real number value of y. In that case, the domain of this quadratic function is a set of real numbers. As for the range, take note that in quadratic function, its graph is a parabola, and so we have to locate the vertex of the parabola for us to be able to know where is the highest or the lowest point of the graph. In this case, the value of a is negative. Therefore, the opening of the parabola is downward. So what we are looking for is the highest point. So looking at the property, we are following the second value. When a is less than 0, then the range is y less than or equal to 4ac minus b squared all over 4a. Now, let us solve for that value. Here in our example, the value of a is negative 1, rb is 4, and rc is negative 8. Let us now do substitution. So we have 4 times negative 1 times negative 8 minus the square of b all over 4 times a. Next, we have to simplify. So the product of this 3 is 32 minus the square of 4, 16. All over negative 4. Next, we have 16 over negative 4. Divide this 2, it gives us negative 4. So the range of this function is set of y such that y is less than or equal to negative 4. At this point, let us check what you have learned from our discussion. You may pause the video so you can answer the following problems. Let's check our work. Item number 1, here's the domain and here's the range. Item number 2, here are the answers. And item number 3, we have this. Next, let's have the graphs. Identify the domain and range. Again, you may pause the video so you can answer the following problems. Let's check it now. First, we have this domain and range. And on the second, we have this domain and range. Now, to summarize our discussion, in finding the domain and range of functions, take note of the following. If the given is only a function, to find the domain and range, here are the following ways. Number one, identify the type of function. Number two, recall its graph if you can or sketch the graph or recall the properties on how to find the domain and range. Well, if the given is a graph, just simply analyze the graph by looking at the values of x or the domain from left to right and for the values of y from down to up that the graph have reached.
Now, I hope you have learned something from our discussion, so thanks for watching. So if you are new to my channel, please don't forget to like the video, click the subscribe button, and click the notification bell to be updated. Bye everyone! See you on my next video.